Hello everyone and welcome back to Lawrence Plays uh, Minecraft. Yes, Minecraft today. Minecraft Dungeons, Dragons and Space Shuttles. The mod pack that adds all kinds of stuff into this game. Yes, it makes it very, very um, complex and busy and weird things like black magic, white magic and so on. So, since the last um, video and in the last, so in the last stream, I was concentrating on finishing off some of the black magic quest lines. So if I have a look in here, the quest lines and black magic down here. I've basically got to the point where I've I've got as far as I can before we start advancing other stuff. So I've done quite a few other things along here. I talked about the undead trees in the last video and they're still ungrowing. Um, no, they are growing because they got bigger, but they're um, they're planted out here. We've harvested a little bit of wood from them and then replanted them and well, they're they're here, they're growing, they're dripping and um, they're, they're, they're quite, they seem to be quite happy. So we can, uh, we don't need to worry about them anymore. Also, so that, that then I came along here and I got to this quest, the Vengeance Pickaxe, which sounded interesting because it's got Fortune 5 and Unusing 3, which makes it sound quite powerful, although I'd need to have a look at exactly what those things mean. But to make it costs ridiculous amounts of stuff. So all of the, a lot of this is expensive but manageable, like blocks of diamond. We might be able to make those, I'm not sure. Blaze rods we've got, dark sticks I've made. They're all expensive but possible, whereas we, I don't believe we have any of this majestic ingot yet. So we can't be, we can't be do, doing any of that. Um, the dark sticks I was it was a thing I did as well fairly recently. Uh, I can't remember which which stream that was in, but those are a dark gem and two undead planks. Oh yeah, so that's what I needed the undead wood for, and that allows you to make dark sticks, which are then for making into various types of um, evil things like uh, <laughs> goodness knows what. Oh, grand tartaric gems. Oh, that's oh reinforced slate. Me yeah, okay. Um, so there's a number of things in here that I will need to have a, have a look into and investigate. But um, basically, we've got the dark sticks, so we've got us. We've um, and that's that would enable me to make that um, uh, magical pickaxe. But there's other things slowing me down. Also in here, we've got the uh, the weak blood orb down here. Now that's again that's just uh, uses the blood altar, but that requires a compressed diamond, which is again way outside my. Um, uh, I'm not going to say outside my comfort zone. It's outside what we can actually make at all, because to make these, you need you need an enrichment chamber basically, and yeah, that's just not going to happen. We don't we don't we don't have one of those yet. So we need to do a lot more work on the base quest lines before we can start doing this sort of stuff. However, there have been things that I can do. So looking along the uh, this line here, I got as far as the uh, as the iron promise acceptor last time, which is a block of iron. That you then um, you then put in the fluid in the blood infuser uh, in the blood infuser like this. It takes an enormous quantity of blood. The whole to use the whole thing 10, 000, 10, 10 full buckets worth. Okay, to create this iron promise acceptor. Uh, you can then turn that into this promise of tenacity. We we need four of those, so it's a lot of iron and a lot of blood, plus some spider eyes which we've got just from killing spiders. These blank slates which come from. Um, Oh, compressed stone into the into here. Okay, I couldn't remember exactly where we were getting those from, but they seem to be something we have a reasonable amount of. Oh, well, you can. Right. Okay. Yes. So you need, basically you need to put compressed stone into a, into the uh, blood altar, and it'll make you these things. So that's that's not too bad. And then a couple of dark gems which you just dug up out of the ground, and those are ex mildly exciting because you can put them in here then, uh, where they can be turned into uh, where where it allows you to upgrade the um, the blood infuser. And that means I can then go in and start making some of the more advanced things down here, like this kineticator. The kineticator is quite interesting. This is, this is what I've been referring to as a wand of picking stuff up. So you can turn it on and off by sneak right clicking like this. It glows when it's on, unglows when it's off. There is also a way to, is it right clicking? Yes, you can, you can choose, you can set the power level on it as well. And what this does is, um, actually let's turn it off for a second. Turn it off for a second. If I come over here and I drop Let's drop this iron pickaxe on the floor. So it's down over there. Now, normally you have to come up to pick it up. You have to basically touch it like that, which is fair enough. That's sort of how picking things up normally works. But with my um, wand of magical picking up, picking things up, if I turn it on from over here, then I can pick it up from about 10 squares away. So about there, like that. So this is fantastic when you're out mining. You just leave this turned on and tucked away in your inventory. You don't have to have it selected or anything. As long as it's in your inventory and not in your backpack, it'll work. You could just leave it there, and then as you as you dig stuff up, no matter where it falls around you, it just all gets sucked up automatically into your into your inventory. So it's a bit like having one of those mag a tool with magnetic on it, but it just works for everything and over a significantly longer range as well. 
Um, I believe it does use up a small amount of blood, so it's got a storage in it. We've got 800, it's got 850 in it at the moment. If I drop this stone axe and then pick it up again, oh, it's still 850, that's 933. Okay, it is supposed to use up the blood very, very slowly in order to do the, do the picking up. Um, maybe, there's a, maybe there's a small chance of it actually picking it up, a, a small chance of it actually using some, and a higher chance of it not. I don't, I don't know, because it doesn't seem to be getting through it as fast as I would expect. Um, but it, yeah, it seems, to be, it seems to be working, which is quite nice. The downside of it is you end up with a lot of random nonsense in your inventory. Like, I have no idea why I've got these pistons. Um... I just end up with all kinds of junk in my inventory that I'm now sort of vaguely trying to get rid of because it's a, it's a waste of space. Like this stone axe. Why have I got a stone axe? That's, that's, a, that's a nonsense. But yeah, you just end up picking these things up because, because magic. Another thing I've done is made a lesser tartaric gem, and that is because people. So what we've got with the will crafting magic, you when you when you kill a monster, if you do it with a senti your sentient sword, their will drops on the ground, and you can then pick it up, and it'll be put into a tartaric gem if you're carrying one. So I've, I made a load of these um, petty Tartaric gems for everyone to carry around with them to gather will up. And they will hold 64 will, which is it's some. And depending on what you're killing, it'll drop somewhere between about a quarter and two will, I think, in my experience. So it's, it's, it'll last a fair amount of time, but it does they do fill up. So I've, up, I've upgraded all of those to lesser Tartaric gems now, which, which take, um, they do take a diamond and some lapis and some redstone and, and the original gem itself. But I think they're totally worth that investment because you then get one that can store 256 will. And that's quite, a, and that's, it's obviously it's a lot more. Um, and the more will you're carrying around with you, the more damage your, um, your, your sentient sword does as well. So it turns it into a more powerful weapon if you've got, if, if you've managed to, if you're carrying around these gems and have filled them up a bit. I haven't filled mine up because I don't tend to do a great deal of combat. As you can see, I've got 1.2 in there, probably because I've killed two spiders or something like that. Um, but for the people who are going out and doing a lot more um, smiting of evil, there it's, it's worth having one. It's worth having maybe two of these on you. One that's completely full that makes your sword a bit more powerful, and then a second one to c collect more will so that I can make carry on making exciting magical stuff in the future. So that's worth having. And in order to make that a bit easier for everyone, I've put a chest up here. That in theory ha contains a number of uh, these tartar lesser tartaric gems, and then whenever ne whenever the people fill one up, then come back, dump it in here, and take an empty one to go on and go away and carry on filling up. So in theory, I should come back here at the beginning of a session and find there's loads of will available to me for any any magic I, I need to do with it. So far, it's been a bit of a sort of a circular thing. I've been using the will to make things for gathering will, um, which is I. It's perhaps a little pointless, but it. Uh, but I'm sure there's going to be more, far more important uses for it later on. I said the same thing with the blood earlier. I was collecting blood for the sake of collecting blood. We have these enormous tanks here, um, but now having made these um, these kineticators, that used quite a lot. That in fact, that used a lot of blood to to, to make it. If we if we nip downstairs again, you can see by looking at the tanks just how much I've used up here. Now this is probably only about a quarter of all the blood I had. So this is down to, this one's about half full. This one's still completely full because there's a pumping system to pump it from this this tank into this tank and then from this tank into the blood infuser. So it, it, it'll always flow across this way. So as they dump it in the top here, it'll just work its way across. But this means that I've got through about a quarter of all of the blood that's been harvested over the last month or two um, in just in making a couple of these kineticators. And... Um, and, and, and a few other things. So it is it is a resource that I'm now actually starting to use, which is kind of nice, I think. I mean, that's sort of the point of it. With my upgraded um, blood infuser, I was also sort of able to make the Scepter of Thunder, which was... That's that's reasonably cheap, actually. We've been to the nether quite a bit, so we've got plenty of blaze rods. Uh, we've got the dark gems from just digging them up. The blood orbs were interesting. That's an empty orb, which is just glass and a piece of iron. So that was, that was cheap and easy. But it takes a lot of... She doesn't take that much blood. It takes three and a half buckets, but it takes a long, long time for it to fill up. So those those are time consuming, um, and you need to have the promise of tenacity in there, the upgraded blood infuser, in order to make these. The uh, no, I've gone too far. Um, 
the what's the scepter of thunder is apparently a one-time use tool that can uh, summon a thunderstorm now i haven't found any use and any reason to summon thunderstorms yet so i've not used it i've just shoved it did i put it in my backpack or did i no i probably put it in my chest of dark magic stuff over here so it's just there waiting for me to find a use for it at the moment um and at the moment it does it seems a little pointless so i haven't bothered but I'm strongly suspecting that at some point in the future there will be a thing that requires a thunderstorm so then that will be very useful in order to summon it. It's not a very cheap way of summoning a thunderstorm um, but it will do it, it will do the job. <laughs> the other thing I've been I've discovered, um, and not in there in the quests, is blood potash which is um, bone meal soaked in blood and that makes it more effective apparently because well, I suppose blood makes quite a good fertilizer so it means you can grow a plant twice as much now most of the plants I've been growing one bone meal has been enough to, to fully grow them so, but I believe there are going to be more advanced plants later on perhaps, perhaps trees take um, are more difficult I'm not sure um, but they will take more fertilizing and therefore having this having this blood potash will um, Will do, having and therefore having doubled bone meal efficiency will will make it a bit more um, a bit more useful. Oh, unless actually, hang on. No, it seems to be one bone meal turns into one blood potash. So yes, it's not it's not doubling the number you get or anything like that. On a similar note, we've got the blood waxed coal, and this is um, this is coal and and um, and blood or charcoal either works and this this has twice as much energy in it now this must be a magical thing because i can't think of any real world reason why soaking coal in blood would would give you would mean it burns for twice as long but this has a couple of uses you can make torches out of it and you get twice as many per block per piece of this and twice as many per stick so it's a twice as efficient way of making um making torches although with a slight um cost in blood or if you put it in use it as fuel or in furnaces or anything like that, then it will burn for twice as long, uh, which I think is quite valuable because it, it makes it makes the fuel a bit denser. And if if we had if we were short of coal or a charcoal, then that'd be fantastically useful. But we're act actually it turns out we're not remotely short of it. We've got loads and loads of coal and charcoal. So having this running in here and making all this blood wax coal is possibly a little pointless. But I'll shove it in this chest here in case I come up with in case I have a use an actual use for it later. And that brings me to the end of this um, this dark magic quest line. I've literally finished this one. There's, there's no more after here. There may well be some more after the Vengeance Pickaxe. I'm not sure. And there's probably going to be some more after the Coat of Arms. But that requires that condensed uh, compressed diamond, which we can't make yet. So then I went off and had a bit of a look at the uh, the light magic as well. Because I'm, sp I'm supposed to be a, 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 a wizard of everything. I wasn't really able to do much here. Because uh, we went to the Twilight Forest. I can't... Uh, Actually, wasn't able to. It isn't quite true. It's just I didn't get round to any of this. Um, the manor infused metal, this this pulverized manor infused metal, um, is made by taking manor infused ingots and pulverizing them in a uh, in a, in a mortar. Um, so that's fine. That's easy enough to do if you've got some manor infused ingots. Now I didn't think we had any because they only come from. Um, there's all kinds of nonsense ways of getting them, but mostly it's down to these um, manor infused ores, and those only come. from not from there I don't know how to find this stuff <laughs> I don't know my way around here very well but basically you find it in the world in the twilight dimension um, I did eventually find out how you get it and you dig it up from the twilight dimension and um, uh, and then you can and then you can smelt it into metal as normal um, so that's fine I we have access to the twilight dimension but I didn't actually go out there to, um, to to go and get any because I had other things I was thinking about it then turned out that we've actually got quite a bit of it that we've got from um, loot kits loot bags and things like that so I could do this um, do, do this quest relatively quickly and easily now but I haven't because it's a bit more interesting to go off and do these things properly in inverted commas and I do want I do I do quite fancy going out and doing a bit of spelunking and mining in the twilight dimension at some point so that's on the to-do list um, also in the white magic we had the uh, the aquamarine and I didn't do this what was the difficult part of this I think it was some of the um, oh yes yeah, so you need I need to make it in the um, mage's workshop and luminescence um, electroline and molten lumium all seemed a little bit tricky now i need to do a little bit more looking into this but i'm pretty sure that molten lumium basically comes from um alloy yes here we go so we need energized glowstone which is just glowstone dust in in the um in the smeltery so that's not too bad which is just crushed glowstone uh so we can we can do that now that people have gone off to the nether and gathered some glowstone for us <laughs> and with some tin and some silver which we've got loads of that makes the molten lumium so that's this one which is so that's not too bad 
Luminescence is oh, again more glowstone gunpowder. Yeah, so that's that again is doable. I can make I can make luminescence if we don't have any of that. And electroline electrotine, sorry. Um I think I'm probably gonna have to make it this way. Uh, but that again is, is stuff we we have all of this. So in the next episode, I think I'm probably going to be working on all of these things to make the to, make, to carry on with the uh, the white magic uh, quest lines. And I can also make a minecart with mana pool. That's not particularly difficult. It's just sort of I looked at it and went, well, what's the point? I don't really care about that. But to an extent, these quests aren't about caring about the thing you're getting. It's about working through the quest lines to, to get to the really exciting stuff at the, at the end. Because at the moment, I don't really know why I need mana. Um, I've got the mana spread, mana pool, the mana spreader. Sure, I've managed to make a horn of the wild. I can't even remember what it does. Oh, it it, it grows. Um, oh, it, har it harvests stuff around you. That that could be quite useful actually for Pete. I wonder. I should make sure he's got one of those because uh, it'd be a good way for harvesting all his crops. Um, floral obedience. What was that? Oh, okay. Yeah, that's yeah, fine. Um, but then I've got this end of flame, this redstone root, fun functional flower with a bell thorn. Um, yeah, and these, I, this, I, I don't really see the point of a lot of these yet. But I'm sure as we work further through the quests, I'm going to find more and more of these things. And they're going to get more and more useful. And then and uh, we'll eventually find uses for it. And then I'll go back and want to make lots of the mana pools and fill them up with all of the, the end of flames and, uh, and, the, um, and the hydro angels and so on. So I think it's a sort of a... You follow the quest lines through in a sort of, well, I'm trusting this to take me to a useful place. And then you get to a useful place and you go, aha, I'm glad I know all of that earlier stuff. Because now I can just jump in and start using this rather than going, okay, I need mana to do this thing. How do I make mana? Which is a bit more sort of, a bit, a bit of a sort of a backwards way of doing it. So I think it's probably quite nice that it's doing it this way around. There have been a couple of sort of little cosmetic things going on. I've redone these stairs here that come down into the into the dungeon part of the um, of, of the tower um, because the previous ones they, they looked a bit grander because they were using slabs rather than stairs, which meant they went down at half the angle. But because they went down at half the angle, there wasn't enough headroom here, so you bash your head all every time you came through here, which was just mildly annoying and it slows you down. And so I've um, I've turned these into the steeper stairs, which means you can which means that that, that problem has been alleviated. Um, also cosmetically, Mike has been working on a uh, a wall to go around the outside of the wizard's tower, and he's got he's got he's done a reasonable amount of this actually, so it's looking quite good. Um, and this ha this has things like uh, steps to go up onto it to have a have a to have a look around if you're not very good at landing with a slime sling. We've got uh, gate towers along here, out going over the paths with these um, walls to stop you to stop you falling off, and possibly oh, not not to stop you jumping off, but to stop you falling off at least, which is a good start. And these are looking quite good. The other one of them has got a portcullis on it, which looks really nice. Made out of iron bars. So yeah, that, that's, uh, that looks good. And gradually we're just sort of um, gradually expanding the, 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 the cosmetics of the place. Also, somebody, mentioning no names, um, I, th I forget who it was. I think, I think we decided it was Mike in the end, actually. Um, spawned in a couple of snowmen, which was the, who then started wandering around, throwing snowballs at anyone who looked at them funny. And leaving these trails of snow everywhere, a bit like sort of snails, snail trails. So that's why there's snow all over the bottom of the wizard's tower. Um, it then rained and the snowmen washed away, so we were notified they were all killed. Um, and all the sn outside, outdoor snow has been washed away, but there's still quite a lot of snow in my wizard's tower, which is... Um, yeah, so that's going to need to be cleaned up at some point, I suppose. I also had a bit of a play around with um, Tinker's Tools, which is an interesting way of making cust of customizing tools to, to have extra powers and interesting interesting things. That's all done over here in the in the smeltery building. Where upstairs we've got this um, this whole system of, for building things, and a tool is made out of various parts. Let's see if I can work any of this out. So I start off I start off by making a shovel because that's a useful thing to have. Um, and is, is, is one of the simpler ones and that's made up of a, um, a binding, a tool rod and a shovel head and each of these can be made out of a different material and depending on what material you use you get all kinds of different effects on your, on your tool. So if we have a look in this, um, in this book here we can see that it talks about the various different types of tools you can use. So I was making a, I was making a shovel um, which is made out of, as it says here, a binder, a stick, and a and a head. And it's you that as you're all, all I'm sure aware of from playing, having played Minecraft in the past. That's for that's picking up loose stuff like dirt, sand, gravel, snow, and so on. Um, and yeah, and can be used to create paths. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, 
But more interestingly, you've then got all of these different materials that you can make tool parts out of. So, for example, let's find a reasonably normal one like um, like copper, for example. So if we can click on copper, it takes me to the relevant page. And here we can see if you make the handle out of copper, you get 23 durability for your, um, for your tool. You get a modifier of 1.05, which I believe uh, multiplies the entire tool durability. So if you've got a big modifier in here, then you can get a really strong tool. So if, if, for example, you had, even if it was a low durability here, but you had a really big modifier, you could then multiply whatever you've made the head and the extra parts out of in order to get a really, really strong tool out of it. So you get a durability of 158 for the um, for, for the head if you make it out of copper. It tells you what level of stuff you can dig up with it, how fast and how, how good it is for attacking. But also, if you make any part of your tool out of copper, then you get the well-established um, trait from it, which means you get gain, you gain additional XP for using it, which is not the most exciting. Um, other other metals, other materials have different things. So if we look at um, let's look at steel, for example. Um, then if you make the handle out of it you get stiff which is so you can it's good for blocking but that's not so not so important for a shovel so you wouldn't make the handle out of that um that again is a sword thing so you leave them you can um, you can hurt an enemy extra by making a sword out of steel um that's again and these are all weapon related things for steel so that's that's no, no point in that for the um for, for this for this particular shovel but for blood infused wood which i do have because i'm um uh, or I could make because I'm a dark mage. This isn't quite what I wanted, but uh, but yeah, you can make you can you can have it living, which means it uses the um, the soul network, which is that energy I was talking about before that you can create by hurting yourself, in order to repair the um, in order to repair the tool. Now later on, I believe I'm going to have other ways of generating hell, uh, generating um, this life force other than by hurting myself. So at that point, having a blood infused wood handle would mean your tool would just repair itself by magic. Alternatively, and more usefully, one of the things I did do was I used um, living wood, and this one allow gives you um, right. So it gives you ecological, which wood also does as well, and that means your tool just magically repairs itself all by itself. But also it gives you botanical, which means you get an extra modifier slot. So I decided I'd make the handle out of living wood, um, and I can't remember what I made the rest of it out of. So let's have a look at the tool itself. So that's this one. Um, I don't know how to find out. What I've what I've made it out of. <laughs> um, oh, here we go. So I made the uh, I made the tool rod, the handle out of living wood, which gets me the botanical and and ecological. So the ecological is the self repairing. Botanical is the uh, extra um, slots for modifying it. I put a bronze shovel head on it because then I get diamond mining level, which is nice, and I get dense, which means it doesn't da get doesn't it doesn't pick up damage as quickly, so the, the tool will last longer. It has the durability goes further, so it doesn't actually give you more durability, but it means there's a chance that you won't use up any durability when you dig something out. And I've got the certus quartz. I made the binding out of certus quartz because that means if you take out one block of a stack of sand or gravel, you get the entire lot in one go. It all just teleports straight into your inventory, really, or sorry, it all gets demolished instantly is really really handy for when you're digging through massive quantities of sand or when you need massive quantities of sand as well so that's that's really useful uh, i didn't need to put that in there uh so is there anything else i can tell about this from looking at the stats not really so that's what that's what i've done so far there are four modifier slots available in this which i've not used any of them yet um, and modifiers allow you to put extra things in like i think you can put in diamond to increase the level you can dig uh, of, of stuff you can dig up you can put in redstone to make it run faster you can put in lapis to make it lucky and i think there are others as well and some of these modifiers you can put more than one in so i could put i could just fill it up completely with redstone to be a really really fast shovel for example I also made a hammer, which I've called Thwacker, because why not? And that one is made with, uh, there's, there's a few more things go into a hammer. Um, they're a bit more complicated. So if we look at hammer here, you, you take it takes, this time it takes a tough tool rod, which is a, a bigger handle. It takes an, a hammer head, which um, doesn't, yeah, which affects it slightly differently. And then two of these um, large plates that are the sort of the faces of the hammer, essentially. And they can, each one of those four things can be something different. So over here, we've got, um, by putting in, um, again, I used I used the living wood um, handle, which has got me botanical and ecological, so the extra extra upgrade slot and the self healing. Um, and I, but I've used an Invar hammerhead in, because I get a really high uh, mining level from that, loads of durability. Um, I can't remember what Devil Strength and Magnetic do actually, um, and I can't remember how to find out either. <laughs> uh, oh, here we go. Devil Strength. Okay, so it's 
if, if you go out and if you go out and use it to fight this is not so useful for um for a hammer but if i did use it to fight with mobs in the in the uh, nether then it would do more damage to them um I'm not going to use my hammer to fight them, so the, re the reason I put that in there was to, was simply to get the massive um, the massive durability from Invar. Um, and magnetic, oh, that is magnetic um, means you pick up stuff as you're mining as well, which is quite nice. But it's also a bit of a duplicate of the uh, of the thing I've got with the uh, the magic wand of picking up picking stuff up. So again, not so necessary. I have very much just used the Invar for the for the massive massive durability I get from it, and and the mining level as well. To be fair. I put a paper... Why did I use a paper large plate? Oh yes, right, because that makes it cheaper to repair the tools. So um, you don't get very much durability from paper. You get a whole nine from it, which is pathetic. However, it's kind of worth it because then as you work through the rest of the, your durability, um, it... Uh, it's cheaper to repair it, so it, you might not it might not last for quite as long, but you'll be able to repair it much more quickly and easily uh, when when you do. And I stuck a bronze large plate on the other side to get the dense um, achieve uh, dense trait again, which means your durability goes further. So all, all in all between them, as you can see, I've got almost a thousand durability on this, which is pretty good, um, and and various other tra very very useful traits. So working through working through uh, tinkers, you can do all kinds of clever stuff in here, and you can make lots and lots of different uh, tools and weapons and things. Um, for example, what's this, one? this is a, a long bow versus a short bow. You can make um, what's what are you a laser gun? Okay, that's presumably going to require a lot of bits that we haven't got yet, but uh, is, is, is an interesting one for the future. I need to make a pickaxe at some point, but but I was told there are some um, complexities to the pickaxe, and so I need to, I'm going to talk to people a bit about that and find out and and see what see what see, see what's recommended. So there's lots and lots of complicated stuff in there, but essentially it all boils down to going to one of these places. You then take a, a stencil like this one. Um, no, not sorry. You go to so you go to the part builder for the thing, some of the things. You put the tool rod in there. You then put the living wood or whatever you're making it from in here, and it'll pop out the the, the part on the other side. Alternatively, for the for the things that are actually made out of metal, where um, just where you can't do it like that, you, you you come over to here to the mold chest, and in here we've got all the different molds for all the different things because people have come along and made all of these already, which is very very uh, kind of them. And so from there you can take the mold out of there, put it on here, and then just dump whatever metal it is you need out of the smeltery into the mold and you'll get the thing that you want which is very nice so it was uh, i have to admit other people have done a lot of the hard work here for me but there's still quite still, still a bit of learning to be done so but um yes that means i can now repair all of those tools uh sorry make all of those tools and then, then i'll be able to repair them with a, a, in a rather different way but we'll discover that later however given that they're supposed to sort of self some of them are supposed to self-repair the amount of uh, mining i do it's quite likely that these will just keep themselves fully repaired and I won't ever need to um, ever need to actually use a repair kit on them. But we'll see how that goes. So that's been my lap most recent stream. And yes, there's been quite a lot of stuff I've been up to. And yes, I have talked for rather a long time. But then that was because there was a lot of a lot of stuff to talk about and a lot of things that I, th I felt like I wanted to explain a little bit as much to um, to embed them in my mind as to sort of to tell you guys how to do them. Because I suspect most people who are watching these videos probably know more about Minecraft Tinkers than I do. So if there's anything I've got wrong, let me know in the comments because it's very much a learning a learning experience for me as well. So I'd like to, I'd like to know what, uh, what what I'd like to know what I don't know. So let's have a quick look at what other people have been up to. Um, Tristan has been doing some mining. He, um, he's look, he had a bit of a look around in the nether and found a little bit of soulstone. He's also expanded the whole draw system um, over here. So we've got even more draws now. Oh, here we go. So there's a little bit of soulstone going on here. There's and so on and some um, and various other uh, gems and more things being stored around over here. And there he is digging, digging a um, digging a hole in the ground for reasons that probably make sense to him. Maybe oh, oh he's prettifying the area up at the moment. Okay, fair enough. But again, we've got this this storage system that we talked about beforehand is now expanding and expanding and expanding and getting bigger and bigger. And I've still got the um, I've still got the thing to um, let's wave back as well, just to be friendly. Um, still got the 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 storage system with the uh, with the draw controller down here to dump stuff into the inventory all over the place. Um, he oh let's see he's also made a blast furnace let's go and look for that I think that's probably over here in this in this building is this the blast your blast furnace no you're a coke oven so a coke oven has been made as well that's probably why we don't have seem to have any shortages of um, of charcoal these days you look like a blast furnace it's an alloy can in a crude blast furnace okay so yes we have a we have a blast furnace I I mean I don't really know what that's for apart from the, the sort of the the obvious of um, cooking cooking up ores and things into oh it's turning iron and yeah, I, I don't know. I believe 
there are various different ways of um, turning ores into metals and some of them are and they all have different efficiency levels so sometimes you if, sometimes if you pulverize things in the pulverizer you get bonus stuff out so sometimes that's a good idea sometimes it's better to shove the uh, the ore straight into the blast furnaces and then you get more of it out so it depends what it is and how rare the ore is as far as i understand so there's a bit of there's there's lots of options around here um, apparently he made some steel, uh, which is a good, uh, which is sort of sort of going to be useful, maybe for weapons and, and other sort of more advanced stuff. He's been doing ovium. I've no idea what that is. Um, and then we get on to Mike, who, as I said, has been building this uh, this rather nice wall around the uh, the outside of the tower. So that's, that's going quite nicely. He's also been um, monkeying around in the Nether, looking for things and um, getting repeat. Apparently, getting repeatedly killed by the uh, by the the dark mobs that have all have weird gravity powers and other strange things that have just managed to um to thoroughly own him. Mike also killed Pete quite a few times because Pete stole his pickaxe and wouldn't tell him where he hid it. So there was a there was a repeat a bit of repeated fratricide in the game as um as, well, so not technically fratricide but uh, just going get a bit of sort of um fr friendly, unfriendly fire as um as Mike was chasing Pete around with a sword and bopping him. I hope he kept all the will that he harvested and blood that he harvested from that because player will and blood might be more useful. Who knows? We'll find out. I guess we'll find out later. And speaking of Pete. Um, he has also been uh, continuing with with his uh, his quest lines. So he, Pete is currently in charge of the mystical ag myst mystical agriculture, which is this system over here where we have the plants. I've talked about these before, but they they grow all kinds of different things. So we've got he's got redstone being grown. He's got lots and lots of inferium being grown, and that's all being collected in the drawers down here. Uh, and I think I believe is he expanding it. So it looks like he's um, advanced advanced levels a little bit. Oh, here we go. Yes, he started growing copper plants as well. So now, now we've got another type of resource that will be um, gradually dug up automatically, uh, gradually created automatically out of nothing. And so, in theory, as as these plant, I presume as these plants get more and more, will we'll, some some of the resources they produce will go into producing more plants, or possibly that's what the inferium is for. I'll have to have to find out. But um, it could be that the inferium helps you make the plants, and then the plants make the make the actual resources, or maybe the plants themselves can be can be turned into more. I'm not going to start picking these up because I don't really understand the system well enough to uh, to be sure I won't break things, and then Pete will be very very sad. But yes, he's advanced up. I think the I think the, basically he's gone from the the level where you um you you're working with inferium onto the level where you're working with prudentium and then into medium um, and hasn't got to the blue one yet, whatever that's called, and or maybe even the pink. Oh, no, yeah, okay. So so he's gradually he's he's progressing through the different uh, through the different levels to uh, to get big, bit better and better types of um of stuff available. As is traditional, Al's um, experience of the stream seems to have been very much a, um, a yak shaving exercise. So, looking looking through his notes, it seems like he wanted to um, he wanted to make an XP. He had a lot of solid XP and wanted to turn it into liquid XP, but wanted to make a bigger tank, but needed hardened glass, which needed an induction smelter, which needed him to do another quest, another quest. Oh, I, I, yeah, he's did, so he did lots and lots of things in a row, and I don't know where any of it is, unfortunately. Um, although I could possibly guess. Let's go and have a look over. This building, I've fallen in. The, I've fallen in the pond. Oh, here's the um, here's the liquid XP. Um, I don't know. I, I I don't really know what's going to be done with that. But there's 32 buckets of it in there, so that's that's nice. Um, I'm sure it'll all come in useful at some point. Um, is there anything new up here? No, this looks much as it did before. So I don't think I don't think he's been doing anything up here. Uh, oh no, no, take it back. He's made an induction smelter and an igneous extruder. I suggest you go along to watch his video for those because he's, I, I have no idea what these are used for, um, but I'm sure he'll explain it in far more uh, far more detail than I, and, and accuracy than I'd be able to. So that has been um, that has been Lawrence plays uh, the this, the summary of Lawrence streams um, Minecraft Dungeons and Dragons and Space Shuttles. Thank you for watching. Uh, if you want, if you come along on Monday nights at uh, seven thirty UK time, you can watch us working through all of this and getting getting things done. Um, and then, of course, these videos come out at the weekend to get you caught up in time for the next stream. There will be the video on fr on Wednesday. No, there'll be the stream on Wednesday where I'll be playing uh, Minecraft. No, I won't. I should be playing Factorio Space Exploration. This is diff difficult. Too many different games. Um, and then on Thursday, there'll be a GTA video coming out, as always. And I'm sticking extra little things in on Tuesdays and possibly Fridays. We'll see how, see how it goes. There's often room for random little things here and there and everywhere. So, thank you for watching. I look forward to seeing you next time. Bye-bye.